Good morning. So we are back to our session on uh, electrical power quality. And this is my third session. And in the last two sessions, we saw the reasons why power quality has gained importance, the reasons from an industry perspective, and the reasons from a consumer perspective. So in this class, we will go forward and uh, I will uh, uh, share my screen. So this is uh, Professor Uma Rao from RV College of Engineering bringing you to the, bringing you the lectures on uh, electrical power quality under the e Shikshana program of VTU. So your course code and is 18EE825 and we are dealing with module 1. So in today's class, we will take up the topic of power quality evaluation procedure. How do I evaluate the power quality? So as we discussed in the last two classes, power quality is an issue where the voltage or the current deviate in terms of magnitude, wave shape, or in terms of the frequency. So magnitude can deviate from the nominal value, which is one per unit. Frequency deviates because of maybe the loading conditions. The wave shape will deviate because of the presence of harmonics. And we saw that the utility voltage affects the consumer. And the consumer current affects the utility. So always remember the voltage is under the control of utility, but the current is under the control of the load. So the type of load we use determines what is the type of current we have. Clear? So in this class, in this session, we will see uh, how do I evaluate? Do I have a proper structure to evaluate the power quality? So each power quality phenomenon may have different causes and different solutions. So we need to improve the power quality, both for an improvement in the equipment performance and also an improvement in the grid performance. Both are required. So we saw that in the, in, again in the previous class, that in terms of IEC, power quality is determined through electromagnetic compatibility. So whether it is compatible or not. And what happens, we see that you have the concept of emission, wherein what is the emission given out by the equipment to the electromagnetic environment. And second, we see immunity, where the equipment has to be immune to the electromagnetic phenomenon and the electromagnetic environment. And some general steps are associated whenever we want to investigate the problems in the power quality and provide a solution for that. So these steps can involve interaction between the utility supply system and the customer facility. Both are involved, right? Power quality is not just uh, an issue only of the utility. So this is the standard procedure for evaluating power quality problems. So first of all, for any problem, you have to know what the problem is, right? Not only power quality, any problem we want to solve, I have to first define what is the problem. Is it a problem of the voltage magnitude, which is reflected in terms of regulation? Is the magnitude higher than what I, I want? Is it lower? Is there a sag? Sag, the word itself tells you, has it fallen down? Is there an interruption? That means I'm not getting supply. Is there a flicker? I, I spoke about flicker in the last class. If you're close to a welding equipment, all your lighting will flicker. Okay, is there a transient? So a sudden upshoot of current, which will die down naturally because it's a transient. Is there a harmonic distortion? So you see, we have spoken of all these and uh, different kinds of loads can give 
ar can arise different kinds of problems. So the first step in power quality evaluation is identification of the problem. Clear? Next, once I know what the problem is, I need to quantize it. That means I need some numbers. See, whenever you talk of quantizing, you talk of a number. So if I just say that quality is bad, that doesn't convey anything. It's just English language. It's language, right? So if I say the voltage has deviated by 5%, then it's a quantification. Okay. Now, to just qualify, I don't need to measure. By just looking, looking at the light, I can make out whether the voltage has dropped. Okay. And by just hearing to the sound of the motor, you can get a feel that you're not getting good sinusoid voltage and there is a lot of vibrations. I told you earlier inverters, whenever we switch on the inverter, the motors would vibrate a lot because I don't get a good sinusoid voltage from the inverter. So these are all qualitative, which don't require measurements. The consumer's experience can qualify, right? But to quantify, I need measurements. I need measurements. So I have to characterize. So what are the causes for it? What are the characteristics in terms of numbers? Has the voltage rise, risen by 5%, dropped by 10%? Is there an interruption for one hour? Is there an interruption for 10 cycles? What is it? And then I have to talk of the equipment impact. So this fault, this disturbance is calling, causing a mal operation of a relay. This disturbance is causing the failure of my electronic equipment. These are all observations, right? So that is the second step. The issue of characterization of the problem. Next, the third stage. Okay, I know the problem. I have qualified and quantified the issue. Now I have to find range of solutions. I have to find what are all the solutions possible for this particular problem. So first, we have the generation, we have the transmission, and we have the distribution. So on the generation side, there is no quality issue. It's only a problem of a failure or a fault. So quality doesn't come into it because the generators are designed to give you good sinusoidal voltage at the rated frequency and rated magnitude. Clear? So there is no issue of quality problems arising from the generation side. Could be from the utility transmission side, though it is minimized. It is minimal. Basically, I told you the problem of quality arises from the distribution side, from the utility distribution. So what is the solution I need to provide for the distribution system? And the end user interface, the interface could be a transformer or could be a relay, a protective equipment. How do I interface the utility supply to the consumer equipment? Okay, the end use consumer system, what kind of a system do they have? Do they have an automated system? Do they have a manual system? What kind of energy meters do they have? Do they have uh, advanced metering infrastructure? Do they have smart meters? So what is the system the consumer has? And finally, what are the equipment design and specifications? So I told you, you can, uh, you know, the consumer has rights now as a customer. So you can fight for your rights. If your equipment gets damaged because of the utility quality, you can sue the utility. Okay. So, but for that, your equipment should be as per standards. Okay, I can't, I can't have a substandard equipment which doesn't meet the prescribed standards and say that because of a utility, my equipment got damaged because of the deviation which the utility caused. Then the utility will say, no, it is not because of my deviation. It is because your equipment is not up to the standards. So when yesterday we discussed EMC, I told you the manufacturers have to adhere to certain standards to make the equipment immune, immune to the electromagnetic environment around it. So your equipment can't keep failing for every small deviation. 
So what is the equipment design? What are the specifications? So these are all the range of solutions I would provide. For example, if you find that a consumer's meter is periodically failing, right? So it could be because the utility has an over voltage at that point and the, and the meter supply is derived from the utility by rectifying the utility voltage. And so is it a problem coming like that from the utility side or is it just that they're using some substandard cheap digital meter available in the market? So you think of all the possible solutions. You think of all the possible solutions. Now, once I give a solution to a problem, we have to validate it. I have to prove that the solution will work. Supposing I give you a design for power factor improvement, then you have to prove it, right? I can't directly buy the equipment, install it and test it and then prove it. No, that's too costly. Because after installation, if it is not as per specification, the whole cost has gone down the drain. So you have to do it before installation, before installation. Clear? So now to validate that the solution works, I need to model. I need to model the system. So we have to build some good mathematical models for the system, which includes the distribution, the network, the protection, etc., and the load. What is the type of load I'm having? How do I model it? And then how do I analyze? I put the equipment, the solution, whatever I'm proposing. It could be a capacitor. It could be a, a power electronic solution like placing an inverter. So how do I model all these? And then what is the procedural aspects to be seen? And then I have to evaluate each one of the solutions I have provided. For example, I may say you install a capacitor bank or you install a bank with discrete capacitors. That means where the capacitor bank can be switched on and off. A part of it can be switched on and off. Or I may say you, you go in and uh, put on an SVC, a static war compensator. And I say you put a lightning arrester at this particular point. So I give you various options. I give you various options. So each of these options, first thing is they should be technically feasible. So the technical feasibility is the first step in the evaluation. And once, so from my range of solutions, I discard all those that are not technically viable, all those that are not technically viable, and only retain the feasible solutions. Then I make an economic analysis. Economic analysis. Sometimes something which is cheap may not serve your purpose. So we can't go only by economics. So there is a trade-off. There is a trade-off. Are you ready to spend some money, extra money, to have extra reliability. So that will depend on what? That will depend on what is the cost to, to the consumer because of a power quality problem. Yesterday we discussed downtime costs. So what is a downtime cost? Fine, if my downtime cost is not too high, but my equipment cost is high, then, then I may prefer not to install the equipment and rather face the downtime cost. Clear? So this economic analysis has to take into account all these things. If I don't provide the solution, what is the problem which is going to occur? How much it is going to cost? How much the solution itself is going to cost? So based on all this, finally, we arrive at an optimal solution. Please remember, whatever I have discussed now is only a procedure. I have not given you any techniques. We have not discussed any techniques. We have not discussed any techniques for characterization techniques for technical evaluation and what is our techniques for cost evaluation. I have not given you any test techniques. I have only given you the procedure. This is the procedure. This is the procedure. Now what happens normally is this. Let us say we have an industry. Let us say you have a paper mill. Okay. And this industry is uh, let us say taking supply from a 66 kV transformer and then using different voltage levels within the industry. Because for the lighting, they may have, they may need only 230 volts. 
and maybe for some drives they need a higher voltage and they may be using dc so for, for which they may be rectifying and so on and so forth and they have some observations what are the observations like some relays are tripping suddenly some relays trip so the first thing is the operator will try to see locally what is the analysis then the operator finds that you know can't find the problem everything seems to be correct so that the, the operator is not able to identify what is the reason for this unnecessary or uncalled for relay tripping or it could be that suddenly the motor starts stalling okay the speed reduces and then picks back and comes back to normal c or they observe excessive vibrations certain times they ex uh, observe excessive vibrations uh, in some time during the day or the power factor capacitors they have installed across their local transformer that may fail not very frequently but sometime so these are all the observations they have okay and then what happens they may not have the expertise to go through this procedure what it is go through this procedure so what they do they call an expert such an expert is called as a power quality auditor or an energy auditor so the power quality expert comes looks at all the customers problems and then takes the entire plan of the plant and tries to come up with what are the causes for these problems there might be one root cause which is causing everything or there may be a number of problems for example your motor stalling could be because of one problem and your vibrations excessive vibration in the motor could be because of some other problem your capacitor burning off could be some other problem so all the cause effect is first drawn and then the auditor gives a solution to the customer with a technical analysis and an economic analysis so sometimes they may give you two or three solutions they may say if you do this then this is the cost but however you may have to undergo take undertake this risk whereas i am providing you one very good solution it is very expensive but zero risk no risk so then the customer will decide whether they are ready to take some risk of downtime etc because they can't afford to uh, invest so much on the power quality equipment so this is the these five steps are the general steps identification of the problem very logical then characterization which would in, include measurements to be made and uh, then coming up with a range of solutions and then evaluation of the solutions and choosing the optimal solution so this is called as the power quality problem evaluation procedure now so in this procedure what are all the issues i have already discussed let's put it concretely the first issue is is there an existing power quality problem okay you are having excessive vibrations in the motor it could simply be that your bearings there is a wear and tear it it may have nothing to do with the power quality problem clear so your capacitor is failing it could just be that you are overloading it and it could not it need not be because of a power quality problem so some of these problems identified could be due to local reasons in the process industry right so first question to address is is there an existing power quality problem that's what the auditor will do the moment you give a list of problems they will find out whether there is any local issue causing the problem or is it coming from some utility issue that's the first thing the second thing is is there a way a design will change the pq problem will it change it okay i'm going to propose a new design will it change it it did not always be the case it did not always be the case for example for example let us say you are located close to a the welding uh, a workshop right so if you if let us say you you have a shop a commercial establishment or a resident close to a welding uh, uh, workshop there is no way you can avoid flicker right you whatever you do i cannot avoid it because the welding is going to cause flicker the welding is going to cause flicker so there is no solution i can give which will solve the problem 
so the only solution for you is you have if your equipment is very sensitive to the flicker caused by the nearby welding shop either you have to move or the welding shop has to move there is no solution there is no technical feasible solution for this that's the meaning of this statement will a new design or change proposed will it solve the problem and secondly will the design cause another fresh power quality problem how yesterday we saw power electronic equipment power electronic equipment cause lost lot of harmonics sometimes the solution to the to a particular power quality problem may involve installation of power quality equipment which involves power electronics components fine so these power electronic components may solve the problem on hand but they may create a fresh problem okay they may create a fresh problem okay for example i install capacitors for power factor improvement that's fine so capacitors will improve my power factor but then these capacitors will provide a low impedance path for harmonics so i have introduced another problem okay my first problem is solved but i'm giving out uh, coming up with a fresh problem and these capacitors may fail the failure of these capacitors may have nothing to do with the power factor but it could be because of harmonics arising so you see how sometimes a solution can create a fresh problem so it is very important to address this issue because once you provide a technical solution it may not be sufficient okay i put an inverter fine your inverter solves the problem of the voltage sag so i can compensate and keep the voltage magnitude to its original value but this inverter is going to introduce harmonics so i have solved the problem of sag but i am introducing harmonics so what happens i have to put filters so my solution should include inverter plus filter because the filters are necessary to mitigate the harmonic problem which may not have been there in your original system but which your solution is going to create so this is actually very complex okay it's very intricate and that is where your modeling and all that will help to see whether the introduction of these mitigating equipment will cause fresh problems so this is the second issue to be addressed whenever you want to have an evaluation procedure the third one was is measurements i told you for quantification and characterization measurements are crucial and i have to first decide what measurements will help me to quantize the problem on hand sometimes we end up making wrong measurements the measurements may not even enlighten you on on your problem okay so what are the problems what are the measurements that have to be done so that we can relate the problems to the causes so measurements will help you with that and as i discussed solution should provide both technical and economic feasibility and most important the solution must be analyzed from both the utility perspective and the customer perspective both are important clear it's not that customer is the king because we are dealing with a very very large integrated system so i cannot look at the entire system only from the customer perspective the utility perspective is also important is it good for the utility and the customer solutions not technically viable have to be discarded that's the first step even if it is cheaper no technical viability has to be first validated and only then you go for a cost analysis the optimum solution will depend on many things on the type of the problem how many end users are going to be benefited how many end users are going to be impacted and all the alternative possible solutions only then you can call it as a optimal solution so these are all the issues that have to be viewed when we come up with a solution so in the next uh, lecture i will be talking about some standard glossaries and terms which are used in power quality 
Now, why is this important? You know, different people use different terms. So if there is, and they could mean the same thing. If there is no standardization, there is absolute chance of, you know, the terms being misunderstood. So when, when the issues of power quality started, I told you it was all in the beginning of 2000, uh, some of the terms were not standard and there was a lot of confusion about what is good, what is bad. For example, what do you mean by electromagnetic compatibility? Is it same as power quality? Somebody is talking of voltage quality, is it same as power quality? How do I define it? Somebody is using the word surge, then a sudden surge has occurred. Another person is using transient. And another person is using an overshoot. So do surge, overshoot, transient, do they all mean the same thing? And so on and so forth. So you see, whenever a new area comes up, the first thing is we have to define the terms. How do I define? So that the surge, when you use the word surge, you and I mean the same thing. So I know what it means. So for that, both the qualifying aspect and the quantifying, the numbers used to define, both are important. And these are where the standard bodies come into picture. So yesterday I told you that in the previous lecture that IEEE and IEC are two bodies which have given all the standards and specifications to define power quality problems. Clear? So in the next couple of lectures, we will be discussing all these and evolve a common terminology. We are not going to evolve. It's already evolved. So we will discuss what are, what are the common terminologies being used globally across different uh, countries in the world. Thank you all. Meet you in the next session.